Kim and Fontenot. They really struggled to start the year offensively, but this team is hitting better than 300 over the last couple of weeks. So they come in really hot. And uh, we're hot, ready to go. First pitch, strike one from Ryan Slater. Good fastball on the outer part of the plate to the senior from Jacksonville. And quickly, Slater is ahead on an off-speed pitch. Now 0-2. Jackson got a couple of hits against the Gators in the regional last year. So he's had success in this ballpark. There's that slider well off the plate. Really crouches down in his stance. So smaller strike zone. And already a guy that stands at just 5'8". There's a chopper to third. First opportunity for Armando Albert. And the throw is not going to be in time. So a leadoff single for Ty Jackson. And just the second start of the year for Albert over there at third base. Yeah, Jackson, good speed. That was going to be a tough play for Albert. He had to come into his right, throw across his body. This is a tough play and put something on it. Cags on the back end did a nice scoop job. So now Brody Popple. And that pitch right through there. John Bennett will call the balls and strikes tonight. Popples from Tallahassee. Sophomore hitting 270 on the year. And talking to Jamie Shoup, he really likes a pop. He said, this kid really has a chance down the road. There's Jamie. 11 years now. But he's been in Tallahassee for a really long time. 0-2 pitch right back towards us, but the net got in the way. Popple is hitting four of the last five. Get that average up to 270. Good change up there, and that's going to find right field. Just a little seeing eye single. And two balls that haven't been hit all that hard have a couple of runners on for the Rattlers. We talk about this all the time. The strikeouts we see in the pro game, it's kind of trickled down to the college game. But you just put the ball in play. Good things are going to happen. And those, like you said, those were not hard hit balls, but the fact that they were put in play, things can happen like this. Well, and this is kind of what Slater ran into trouble wise last time out in his midweek start. A few little dinks and dunks. And now the runner's going to go, and he's going to get nailed. Donay with a dart. Jackson didn't really get a good jump at all there, but he didn't put on the brakes, and Heyman. We'll throw him out. This had to be some kind of miscommunication with nobody out. It just makes no sense to go with your three hole hitter up. It's a late, late jump. And, and the other thing that was interesting, too, is Jackson's only got one stolen base attempt on the season. So that erases one of those balls not hit all that hard. And there's a strike. 92 mile an hour fastball from Slater. Slater again did not throw over the weekend. Last time he pitched was against Florida State. That ball's hit the center pretty well. It'll turn Guy around, but he recovers and just shy of the track hauls it in. Yeah, nice job by Guy. He opened up glove hand side, which is probably what you want to do first as an outfielder. Then realized it was going to be over to his right, and he just changed his path and looked very smooth out there doing it. Just 21 homers for Florida A&M. But this guy has the most of them, six. And a good change up there. That ball's hit hard and into right field. So three singles in the inning as Grico jumps all over a first pitch fastball. Yeah, he's their big power guy, too. Jen Michael Bastardo, a 311 hitter, one of their better hitters, stayed back having shoulder issues. So that was a main cog in our lineup that we're not going to see tonight. But you'll see Adam Hader Mota. Slater's been pitching from the stretch all inning, and a good slider there puts him ahead 0 1. Every time you see, every now and then you see a team, you go, oh, that guy's been here for like 10 Ever. years. <laughs> There's your guy, Hater Moda. Seems like he's been there forever. Yeah, he's been a big part of this group for a long time as and, that slider misses. And, and Jamie Shub says, Hater Moda is the guy that every year we I think someone's going to beat him out. 
at third base. And he just wins the job. Yeah. Something to be said for that. And he's hitting 299. Slater's harder fastball so far misses. That one at 93. And that ball is hit hard. Hung a slider that time. Shellnut is going to look for it, but he's going to watch it go into the bullpen. And the first inning struggles continue for the Florida Gator pitching staff. They have now given up 30 runs this year in the first inning. Well, the guy that Jamie Shoup calls David Eckstein without tools does it again as far as doing things to impress his coach and obviously a hanger right there, a little cement mixer. So four hits in the inning now off of Slater. And that one misses down low to Joseph Perini. Another little guy, just 5'7". He lays off of that changeup. From Crawfordville. And that one misses high again. So Slater, after giving up the home run, having some issues finding the strike zone. But he does right there. There's a pop up left side of the infield. And Albert just outside of fair territory will halt. And the first pitch fouled back and that one got a piece of the catcher Popple. That's not a good way to start. Get the bell rung early on. Mm. So he's like, all right. Guess he's ready to go now. Yeah, they give it a shot of Cuban coffee here every Sunday. That's that's the uh, equivalent of that <laughs> on the field right there. You're ready to go now. Ot's ready to go, and that one misses up high. Shelton really struggling right now. He's got just two hits in his last 30 at bats, and he's way too good of a hitter to see those numbers. But he misses a change up there for strike two. All right, so here we're talking about midweek games, all right? A couple weeks ago, 0 for 3 against Jacksonville, went 3 for 14 against LSU. 0 for 3 last week, went 0 for the series against Mississippi State. So you need to get some momentum going. But he continues to swing and miss, and that a breaking ball at just 79 miles an hour will sit him down for out number one. You get a couple of knocks in that midweek game. Get that confidence going. You're feeling good going into the weekend. And this is a nasty breaking ball that the bottom falls on. I mean, the key for him is throw strikes. I mean, that's been his bugaboo. That's why his ERA is so high at 11.57. And now Ty Evans, and he'll take a fastball for strike one. And so far, at least through the first five pitches now, location's been really good for Dallas Tees. Evans hitting 375 here in his junior year. He'll take that one up and off the plate. Second best average on the team. And just two Gators right now are hitting above 300. It's Evans and then Caglione on deck. So a lot of guys struggling right now. As a 1-1 is hit hard, but foul past Taylor Black. I think when when you look at just the batting average over the last 10 games for the Gators, just a 226 batting average. And it starts in that midweek game where the Gators have struggled to be successful. So now the one two and breaking ball down. And I know the movie Major League gave us the uh, the talk of sacrificing chicken and going to KFC to try to get out of slumps. But <laughs> Is there a real way? What do you do? Do you continue to grind? That's all you can do. 2-2 Two -two is hit hard on a hanger, but straightaway center field. Jackson to the edge of the warning track will catch it for out number two. Well, you always have that theory with the mind believes the body achieves. Uh, yeah, I've seen guys do crazier things where 
you know, you change the socks, you change this, you change part of the uniform, and then if it works, you believe that's the reason. That's all it takes. I mean, when I'm managing the minor leagues, if we were struggling for six innings, I would come back and go, hey, guys, I just changed my shoes. We're going to score now. We're all set. And it's crazy how that works. Yeah. You know, it's just whatever you have to do. Yeah, something's got to change the, the mind. Well, nothing really needs to change with this guy. He's been sensational yet again. Jack Caglione, team best, 13 homers, 29 runs driven in. And that average has been hanging around 400 all year. He's going to get plunked. Inside fastball got him. And the Gators will get their first base runner. Fastball and way out of the zone. Hits him in the back of the thigh. And and Nick, we've seen a lot of teams now over the last few weeks is maybe more film or what he's doing, trying to pitch Come inside. him in more. Right, yeah. The home run he hit the other day was on a 1-2 fastball right down the gut. It started inside and just kind of two-seam fastball right over the barrel. Here's another guy scuffling. It's Tyler Shelna, and he'll take a breaking ball off the plate. Just three for his last 14 is a senior from Lake City. But he's been getting on base. And that is the most important thing. He has reached now in 14 straight games. Been walking a lot lately. As that breaking ball caught the outer part of the zone and Shelnut did not agree. Shadow is no longer a factor on the mound and at home plate. But everything else in the sunshine right now. And that's a good 1 1 pitch to get ahead. And Shelley's a guy that's going to have to pick up the slack here. He's in the four hole now, and he's going to have to be a guy that's going to be steady. He'll be a guy that's going to be a force knocking in runs from here on out. In a 1 2 hole. That one way off the play. They'll try to chase Caglione back, and he's in there. Dirtying up those white pants today. Gators are wearing what they normally wear on Saturdays. Changing it up. The Gators, I think for the first time this year, practiced on Monday, as Kevin O'Sullivan alluded to last week. So just trying to do something different and change the mind during these midweek games as that one just misses down low. And you know, the midweek games as well matter for your home record. And of course, the majority of these happening here at home for the Gators. Gators have already lost seven times right. at home this year. That's as many as they did all of last year. Now the 3 2 as Cags goes, and that one just off the plate on a breaking ball. So Shellnut continues to walk. That is his team best 20th free pass of the year. And with masking a lot of this, too, is the weekend results. Now, think about it. Gators with two comeback victories. If it didn't go that way, it would have been a sweep for, for Mississippi State. Everybody be thinking different about midweek games, thinking they don't matter. Well, they matter. So, Kate Curlin steps in with a chance to even this game up. Florida trailing by three here in the early going, and that breaking ball is fouled off. And a lot of balls spinning up there from Dallas T's here in the early going. Curlin's average at 290, five homers, 18 runs driven in. Yeah, his swing's looking a lot better here the last couple of games for sure. Shortening it up a little. He hits that one pretty well out to right. That's got a chance to get out, and it will with ease. An oppo bomb for Kate Curlin, and the Gators answer right back. So they've given up the most runs in the first inning with 30, and then they have now scored 43 with that three-run homer. Just nice, quick to the ball swing. Watch how short this swing is right here. Stays on it. Knob into the bat towards right center field where that ball was hit. Boy, you know he's going good when he's going right side. Well, and I think that's the 
the biggest thing is Heyman takes strike one. A lot of his success last year was gaps, right center, right and, field. And all his swing and misses is pulling his head and his shoulder. Correct. As if he's trying to launch it to left field. So that this is a great sign for Cade. And that one is hit hard. Heyman through the left side. That will end a, a really long slump for Heyman. So maybe this will start to get him going. Luke had just been two for his last 30 before he, that hit. He's another guy. Struggled on, on midweek games. It's carried over to the weekend. A big night tonight. I guarantee he has a big night tonight. He's going to have a big weekend at Missouri. Same with Kobe Shelton. So here's Armando Albert. And the lefty hits one off the end of the bat. A can of corn for Ty Jackson as and it's crazy to think who Florida A&M beat as we get going seven eight and nine will hit here for the uh, the Rattlers as Ryan Slater will try to have a clean inning and there's a strike. I know you and I both were In, doing that games. I remember <laughs> it. It was it was very surprising. At it, the time. It's crazy just to pitch alone. Here's Albert's going to get another chance plants his feet and the throw is high. So Albert's had a couple of chances over there at third and has not been able to be successful. That'll be a leadoff error. So just pitching that night, A.J. Puck, yep. Justin Schaefer, Sean Anderson took the loss, Kirby Sneed, Dane Dunning, who was great the other day against uh, the, the Rays, and Bobby Pointer, six different big leaguers yeah. pitched in that game for the Gators. Yeah, and you haven't gotten to the hitters yet. Have <laughs> I have not, and that may shock a lot of people. Two New York Mets, Pete Alonzo and Harrison Bader, and Richie Martin was the shortstop. <laughs> that goes to show you baseball is just one of those games where it's just you just never know. Ben Kim goes the other way, and that's going to bloop its way in front of the left fielder. So balls aren't being hit all that hard, but Slater has given up contact and two more guys on base for the Rattlers. And, and I remember after that game, I ran into Pete Alonzo, and he was not feeling too good about it. He said, Nick, I am really salty after this one. And that was his comment back then. And, and again, it was just one of those days where Florida a &M put it together against a great team. And that's why Jamie Shoup wants to play the Gators. He wants to give his team experience it's a recruiting tool. Sure. And it, it makes them better playing up the, the great competition. Here's True Fontano in the nine hole. All right, his job right here, if they're actually going to go ahead and finish this off, uh, lay the bunt down, bunt it right at Albert, the third baseman. His only play would be to first. He does get it down, a good bunt, and Slater's only play will be to first. Low throw, but Kate Curlin will dig it up. So a wow. successful sacrifice. By Fontenot. <laughs> Kate Curlin, if he doesn't come up with that, it's bases loaded, nobody out. So that's a great play. And you don't have a first baseman's mitt, too. You got your second baseman's mitt, probably the smallest mitt on the field, and you're going to try to have to dig one out. Watch this pick right here. Not an easy thing to do with the smallest glove on the field. And how about the, the job of bringing his other hand over, too? Yeah. You don't see a lot of people do that. Gators are going to play the infield back for Ty Jackson. He'll take a slider for strike one. Jackson led off the game with an infield single as Slater goes back to the windup and misses with that one. Yeah, I think Kevin Osella has confidence that his team's going to score a lot of runs tonight, so he's playing back. And we'll see if Slater can make the pitches and try to get out of it. These are the situations he'll be in. On the weekend, so it all means something, but he misses again for ball three. And you look, you got your guy up there. I'd green light him for sure here. He did. Yeah, A&M's been playing really good. Seven and two in conference. As Slater readies for the 3-2 pitch, and he got him. Good off-speed pitch, and that's a big strikeout, the first one of the night for Slater. And that's the off-speed pitch we've come to know from him. The changeup. Yeah, it's, it's really a pitch he didn't have much last year. Adding that to the, the repertoire has been fantastic. And that pitch cutting back like that, it's a late decision by the hitter saying, oh, I better chase after it. Here's Popple. 
And that's a strike. Even things up. Popple just a seeing eye single his first time. Tags was holding on the runner at first. He plays back for this one, and that one's back over our heads for strike two. Now let's see how they do it, Popple. Dangerous hitter in their lineup in this scenario right here. A one two, change up, missed. And, and going back to the strikeout, too, I think so many people understand that Slater's slider is really, really good. So they're probably looking for that. And then when you, you see a change up, it's tough to recognize, especially right on right. Right. And, and, and to make your point, you're a left handed hitter, and you have a guy like Slater whose slider's coming into you, you're gearing up for it. When he throws the change up to the lefty, it's going away from you. So it's a completely different pitch that you expected location wise. Here's the 2 2. Change up again and hit hard. Popple's got his second knock of the night, and two more runs are going to come in for the Rattlers. And the difference right there, location. Yep. Pitch, pitch was up in the zone. Yeah, that pitch, the screaming hit me. It was right in the happy zone for sure. Almost lucky he only got a, gave up a single on it. Watch with the location of this pitch. Change up over the plate. He, the one he got in the chase was a really nice one. Down away, late movement. So now Jacoby Stanley flew to the warning track in center field his first time. Now remember, Slater probably only going to go 50 pitches, maybe not that much more. This is only the second inning. He's at 42. Good fastball there. Well, and, and I think, too, when when you look at Slater, he's been so good on the weekends, these midweek games, you just you don't see that same fire in him. And, you know, I think for anybody watching or listening, the young kids out there, it doesn't matter who the opponent is. It doesn't matter if it's the leadoff guy or the nine-hole guy. You've got to have that mindset, I think, every single time to know that you want to beat that guy that's 60 feet six inches away from you. And like I said, confidence comes by doing. If you're struggling midweek, you take that into the weekend. You're not feeling good about your stuff, what you've been able to accomplish. Runner goes, and the 2-2 pitch is a slow roller to Shelton. Get a shortstop, has it, and his throw is perfect to retire the side. But a leadoff error. And Brody Donay getting the start today takes that one down low. His 12th start of the year for the average just 209 for the transfer. <laughs> Fouls off that breaking ball. We talked about Brody in the swing and just shortening it up for him makes him a better hitter. Keep that swing from being too long. He's got all the, the power in the world as he fouls that one straight back to some weak contact. His issue is just putting the bat on the baseball. 19 strikeouts and 43 at bats this year. Does have a couple of homers. And he'll take that one up. In yeah, I think they would really love to see Donay to be able to contribute offensively. That's certainly why they brought him in here. Yeah, had big numbers last year, Virginia Tech. With 12 homers and under 40 games. And I think they were thinking right, right early in the year, DH for him. Sure. And, it, and believe me, that job is still open. Oh yeah, you and, can <laughs> definitely see that. And that's why right there that ball is hammered deep down the left field line and it's going to be foul by a pretty good distance but all the power in the world right there yeah, about 440 feet. Wind is blowing out that way but wind was not needed for that baseball. So good at bat there by Donay draws a leadoff walk. I mean, there's there, like we talked about. There's jobs that are still open in that Gator batting well, order. And, and I think just 
the ability to lengthen the lineup. You, you saw this team last year, one through nine, it was a grind. It was a tough out for any opposing Absolutely. pitcher. And now it's it almost feels like you get to those bottom three hitters and not much is happening. But Garrison started to hit over the weekend and he'll be in there catching on the weekend. So there's one of the guys as Jalen Guy steps in. And it's been that center field platoon between Jalen Guy and Michael Robertson. And Yos is getting more playing time now. Yep. A freshman from Sickles High School. They're just trying to find a couple other spots in the bottom part of that order. Guy misses that one. But imagine a powerful guy like Brody, Brody Donay hitting eighth mm -hmm. in the lineup. And if he can contribute from that spot, that would be huge. Now that was an 82 mile an hour fastball. He only he touches about 84, tops 85. Guy just a 185 hitter. He has been struggling of late. His last hit is actually March 15th. So it's been about a, a half a month. He's 0 for his last 10 at the plate. Making his 12th start of the year. So he and Donay both doing that. That ball is hit out to left, weakly off the end of the bat. Stanley will run over towards the line. And after losing his hat, he'll haul it in for the first out. So Colby Shelton, as the Gators get back to the top of the order. Shelton struck out to start the game. Tease was really good through the first couple of hitters. And then he hit Caglione and everything went haywire after that. Shelton fouls that one off. They are going steady diet of breaking balls here on, on Colby Shelton. He's been offering at most of them. He's got to make sure he keeps his hands back. Try not to be too anxious on this because they're around the plate. And remember, mid 80s fastball if you're sitting on that pitch. They do not shift on Shelton like all the SEC teams have been doing. And like Florida State has done the last couple of midweeks, so you see a normal there. Shelton's just been hitting a lot of ground balls with three guys on the right side of the infield. So a lot of weak contact. See if he can barrel up a few baseballs tonight, but he misses again for strike two. In fairness to Tease, he's thrown him some really good breaking balls. Yep. I expect another one coming. Donate does not have a stolen base this year. Yeah, that, that would, which should be the last throw over, I would think, by Tease. And another breaking ball will sit Shelton down again. He's so, just having trouble timing that up. Yeah. He's going to go below the bat. He's going to swing over to top. But these are good pitches. The fact that the catcher is catching that ball out of the strike zone is tell, showing you how much that ball is dropping. So Ty with two outs. Evans flew to center his first time and he's going to line one foul this time. Hit the ball really hard. It took Ty Jackson all the way to the warning track. His first time up. Yeah, he went breaking ball there, hung it. Just out in front was Evans. Evans is one of those guys. He could look bad on one swing, even two, and then just barrel one up. Another ball hit really well, but well fouled down the left field line. He, he's up there going, come on, throw it harder so I can get it in play here. Yeah. That ball's coming in 83-84 on the fastball, so he's way out in front. He's used to facing 94, 98 on weekends. And it is. It's a big adjustment for these guys trying to get the timing right. Now the 0-2. Way off the plate. 
Evans went 0 for 3 on Sunday. That ended a seven game hitting streak. I'd be looking for breaking ball right here if I'm Ty Evans and just keep your hands back. If you have to shoot it to the right side, so be it. There it is, and that's what he tried to do. I mean, obviously, the pitch he's got working tonight is that breaking ball. That 84 to 83 to 85 mile an hour fastball, that thing is a show me pitch just to spot it somewhere. But his out pitch is going to be the breaking pitch with two strikes. Gators trailing by two here in inning number two. Nobody has hung a zero on the scoreboard yet. But that's going to happen now as that one is called. He'll face the four, five, and six hitters in the Florida AM order. Scored three in the first, two in the second. And there's a good pitch for strike one to left handed hitting Sebastian Grieco. Their leader in homers with six. And he'll foul off a fastball. Yeah, Gator defense, they need a quick inning here. So the midweek starts continue to hurt this Gator baseball team. Good pitch right there. Down in the zone. Heyman will throw him out. And that's strikeout number one for Fisher Jamerson. There's that slider nicely done. Bounces it ahead in the count. Gets him the chase. It's a way to start the inning. Here's Adam Hader Mota. Guy that had the big blast in the first inning. Check his swing on a slider. Hader Mota's third homer of the year. He's got 13 ribbies now, and he's got himself another hit as that one comes right back where it came from. The veteran. Yeah, he just continues to hit Gator pitching. But he is now hit in 12 of the last 13 games. He's got 19 hits in those 13 games. So he's really seen it well. Now Joseph Perini. And a good backdoor slider for strike one. Well, Hater Motor and Greco both hit home runs a year ago mm -hmm. in a midweek game against the Gators. The Gators won that 17 to 7. He ended up run rolling Florida a and that night in just seven innings. Been a lot of blowouts of late. These teams did face each other in the regional though last year, and Gators won it three to nothing. Here's the 0-2, and that one's hit hard. And those are words that should never come out of somebody's mouth. 0-2, and that one hit hard. Yeah, that's not gonna. Make Sully happen or David Kopp. So the Rattlers are with eight hits. And there's only one out in the third inning. Now Jalen Niles, shortstop. Strike one there. A bad idea right there. Armando Albert was playing two steps behind the bag at third. And that was a bunt for a base hit if he put it down. Sorted there for strike two. Well, the further along this game goes with Florida and Adam on top, you know what they're going to be thinking in that Rattler dugout about something that happened last night. That pitch was really tough to block. That well short hopped home plate. And because of it, both runners are going to move up 90 feet on a wild pitch. And you know Jamie Shoup got his guys together and said, you know, last night there was a game at Alex Box Stadium. And a team from Baton Rouge won that game, and it wasn't the LSU Tigers. It was Southern University 11-7. to And I guarantee you that fired up this A&M team to say, hey, you know what? We can do that. No question. 1-2 pitch. Missed again. And J.V. Shoup reminded me today, he said, yeah, that's the Southern team that beat LSU last night that we beat 16 to 1. Wow. On the 25th of February, a game that they played at Vero Beach. That one hit hard, but right to the second baseman. 
Curlin will allow the run to score, take the out, and it's an RBI ground out for Jalen Niles. So the wild pitch really hurts there. Yeah. Took him out of the double play. So that club right there beat the team by 15 runs that beat LSU last night. So we're running with third now with two outs. And there is strike one. Ben Kim, the right fielder, singled his first time. Good off speed pitch there. And Jamison way ahead. No balls and two strikes. The 3 0 win by the Gators in the regional last year was the closest that these meetings have been in, in a pretty long time. 13 3, 17 0, 10 0, 8 0, 10 2, 12 1, 19 0. But the Rattlers ready tonight. And the one two is a pop up. Left side of the infield again, Albert, just into the outfield grass, will make the easy catch. And that was the guy stepping into the box right now, Jack Caglione. That started a little two out rally for the Gators back in the first inning. First pitch here is off the plate on a fastball. Cags got hit, Shellnut walked, and then Curlin hit a three run homer. Caglione just spits on that breaking ball. He's hit in all but two games this year, 25 of the 27 that he has played. He has reached in now 14 straight games. Same number on the front of those blue jerseys. And that ball is hammered. Not sure if it's going to be high enough. It won't be. Just a dart off the middle of the wall. And... Exit velocity had to be about 115. No, I totally agree. In the beauty of his launch angle, it being so low, sometimes 15 like that, maybe 16 degrees, is what scouts are salivating over. That's a top spin ball. It stayed in the ballpark. However, what that saying down the road is, he's going to be tough as nails to strike out. Well, here's Shellnut, and he's going to get plunked. First pitch breaking ball. And when you got a guy with Cags' ability, that's going to be tough to strike out. MLB teams are going to be all over the future of that. So just like Curlin's first at bat, he's got two guys on. Cags at second, Shellnut at first. And a trip to the mound. Cody Williams is a righty out in the Florida A&M bullpen. Right, let's go back to uh, the, the ball that, that Cags hit. Now, don't watch where the ball ends. Watch the kid in the orange. <laughs> he was like, man, I wanted that baseball. <laughs> they thought they were getting a home run and weren't able to get it but it's just it's amazing hips everything right on that ball delivered it right where that ball was pitched and there was that kid in the orange jersey again <laughs> he's out there hanging out for homers balls down in the dirt good read they're going to go backside on the throw though and nail shelna that's a great decision by Brady popple the catcher back there It really was. He knew he had no shot at getting Cags. He glanced over there and he saw that Shellnut broke a little later, and that was the play in front of him. The Pirates used to have a catch name. Mike Lavalier used to be great at that play right there, going after the trailer guy. And and it's got to be hard as as a base runner because you don't really know if that guy is going to go. Sometimes they stop. Right. So you, you have to wait and get that momentum. You're not the one making the decision. Well, you're caught between looking at the ball in the dirt and where the runner in front of you is going. So that's why it, it takes a little bit of time. And because of that, it was a great job, you know, by uh, Popple 
to say, I can't get the guy. I got to go after the trailer. And he picked it up, and that's right where he went. Gators have struggled in this situation as well, trying to get guys home from third with less than two outs. Playing the infield back. So Curlin's just got to make contact. But he's been very good this year with runners in scoring position. He's hitting 444. That's way better than his overall average of 298. Oh my. Another good stop by Popple, but not a good throw. They escaped two bouncing throws, mm. one from the pitcher, one from the catcher, and somehow came out of this unscathed. Kind of looks like Mike Lavalier. Ah, you know Spanky, huh? Yeah. yeah. Three and two. Now to the Gators' second baseman. And a good pitch right there by the righty. Cade just chased one in the other batter's box. So there again, not recognizing ball up in the zone, what you need to do, and that's a big strikeout. And that's the pitch he's used tonight to be effective. He spots that 83 to 85 fastball, tries to get you ahead, maybe to foul it off, and then tries to get you with the off speed. Here's Heyman. He singled his first time up. Hard line drive through the left side of the infield. That one gets away, and the Gators are going to get a run anyway. So a couple of wild pitches in the inning. Caglione scores, and the Gators answer the one that Florida A&M got in the top of the inning. And that's one of those where Popple will say, you know, it's a wild pitch. I get it, but it was blockable. So Heyman hits with the base is empty. That one got a piece of Heyman. So the wildness continues. Let's go back to that wild pitch right here and, and just under through the wickets and catchers hate when that happens because they're going to blame themselves on that. Yeah, it's, a, it's that long hop that's that's hard. You, you think maybe the ball is going to come up, but it just stays down. And he didn't make himself big. So Jamie Shoup out to the mound. Second time this inning. That means a pitching change must happen. And Cody Williams will come out of that bullpen in left center field. There he is, and we'll take one oh, okay. a little bit further. Yeah, why'd you say that? Strike one to Albert on an 89 mile an hour fastball. Albert getting the start tonight. He flew a little lazy fly ball to center his first time up. Been a while since he's had his last hit. Played a lot early on in the season when Curlin hurt his hand and then has gotten out of the rhythm. March 6th, the last hit that he's had as a Gator. Yeah, he has a chance for more playing time at third base if he can start swinging the bat and getting some consistency going. I know it's something that's hard. You know, you, you don't play every day, but you know what? Sometimes you wait, you get your opportunity, and you've got to make the most of it because you never know when the next one's coming. Yeah. And that's going to be a life lesson there. One, two is high. And I think that's the case for, for several guys on this ball club. Kevin O'Sullivan has tried different freshmen out there at left field trying to figure out what to do at third base, and then they haven't necessarily hit, so it's, okay, let's try Albert again as the 2-2 is fouled back. I don't remember a year where this far into to a season, four weeks now into SEC play, where there's still spots not solidified. And yeah, 2 2 is going to plunk them. A lot of freebies tonight from this AM staff, and that's back to back hit by pitches. Third time a Gator has been hit this inning. 
And that's where he's been hitting them. Back of the thigh, back of the calf. Well, he hangs one here. Gators will have the lead. Brody Donay able to lay off of a breaking ball there. Donay walked his first time. Had a really nice at bat, just missed hitting his third homer of the year. Hit that one hard, but just foul again. Similar to the home run, just to the left of the foul pole. So the Gators have already been hit four times tonight. Season high is five. That happened against Mississippi State over the weekend. Breaking ball is hit pretty well. That win could help it. Jackson trying to run it down to the wall. Bye bye baseball. He kept that one in play. And a three run shot for his third homer of the year. Like I said, he hangs one. He can't get the lead, and it's exactly what happens. Hangs him a slider, and the big man takes it out of the yard and then some. Again, just shows you the, the pop that he has. And again, a night like tonight, mm -hmm. midweek game, right? You think Brody Dene cares if it's a midweek game? Nope. You think he's walking around going, this doesn't mean anything? Yeah, just needs something to, to go his way. And think about this. That bomb he just hit, you don't think that's going to get him playing time this weekend? You know it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least the opportunity. Good fastball there. Guy quickly in a 1-2 hole. He flew to left his first time. And a little pop up to second here. Fontenot on the edge of the dirt has it to retire the side. Damison delivers ball one to the nine hole hitter, nine one and two for the Rattlers who trail for the first time tonight. Gators with a couple of crooked innings. There's a strike. Fontenot laid down a sacrifice bunt his first time up. And it worked. Popple then came up and got a big hit. Here's one out to right where Evans will drift back and make the catch for out number one. You can see sunglasses are on top of his head. That has now made it no factor. Sun is behind the bleachers down the third baseline. Getters need a shutdown point right here. Rattlers have scored every inning. Ty Jackson back to the leadoff spot. Heyman has some issues with his pitch com, but now he's good to go. That slider just misses. Alex Philpot out in the Gator bullpen. Gators trying to win their 12th game here at home this year. Good slider there to even up the count at one and one. This would be a, a big night too for Phil Pot. Mm -hmm. A lot of sliders here to Ty Jackson, who singled his first time up. He's now hitting five of the last six. Now the one two pitch see it. Good fastball on the outer part of the plate that one surprised Jackson it had been all off speed and then he just threw 94 right down the heart of the plate. Yeah the breaking ball has been a good pitch for him so it definitely froze him he's looking for that pitch going away. 
Two-seamer worked its way back in. And way back to the dugout because of it. It's the first time that the first two hitters have been retired tonight in any inning for Florida A&M. And this guy is yet to be retired. Brody Popple has had a nice night. Singled and scored in the first and then singled in a couple of runs with two outs off of Slater in the second. Neither starter was good tonight. Slater gave up five runs, three earned over two innings. That one hit hard. Curlin, though, backhands it on the edge of the grass, makes the play. And for the first time tonight, the Rattlers go down. He's there. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. He'll face Colby Shelton to get going. And just missed with a first pitch fastball. Yeah. This is not the kind of guy you want to see if you're scuffling. I mean, he's coming at you from all angles. That one misses in, so one out, one in. Shelton has struck out in both of his at-bats. Gators have only struck out four times tonight. That one catches the outer part of the plate. Guy like him, he just got to really concentrate on keeping that front shoulder in if you're the hitter. Well, and you can see why Jamie Shoup chose this inning for him to face Shelton and then Cags two hitters later. That one hit well down the left field line. Stanley trying to run it down, but he's going to run out of room. And maybe that gets Colby Shelton going. He ties Cags with his 13th bomb of the year. This is exactly what Colby Shelton needed. Stay on it, lefty, side armor, keep the shoulder in, keep the head on it, go with it, and he does just that. Great piece of hitting, I'll tell you. From a confidence standpoint, I can't tell you how much that meant to Shelton running around those bases. Here's Evans. He'll foul that one back. It's just the second homer that Kelly has given up this year in 27 innings. So he has been really good. Evans misses that change up. Ties 0 for 2 tonight. Flew to center and struck out. And he'll chop that one to short where Niles will gobble it up. And throw across in time for out number one. And tip your cap to uh, Kelly on that. That was a nasty pitch that made uh, Ty roll over it. But the reason he rolled over it was because of the movement down and away. So here's Kags. Was hit and scored. The first time. Now a little slow chopper. It's going to be a tough play. And that's going to be a great play by True Fontenot coming in to get it. Good hustle by Caglione down the line, but the Rattlers second baseman did a nice job of coming to get it. Everybody collectively held their breath. Cags went down after he hit the bag. Looks like to be okay. His foot just slipped out. Those are size 16s right there. What a great play coming in. Putting a little hair on that throw, making it happen. But I think you have to see right there, though, out of all the tools that we talk about, the, the defense, certainly yeah. the offense, the way he's been throwing, there's a lot of hustle with Jack Caglione this year, and Shelnut's going to get hit again. So that ties a season-high five for a game. It's happened twice this year against Columbia and then also against Mississippi State. So the third different game this year where the Gators have been hit five times. No stranger to Kelly. This is the uh, seventh he's hit this year. You're right on that shin bone. This guy did something back in the first inning, a three-run homer. And Shelnut's going to get picked off. Good move by the lefty Kelly. And no chance at all for Shelnut. Over Gators have used a long ball a lot tonight. A couple of three-run homers. 
One by Curlin. One by Donay, and then a solo shot by Shelton. And there's a shot right to Armando Albert to get things going. One pitch, one out to start the fifth. This ball is smoked right at Albert. Adam played perfectly. Nothing doing, right? Yep. Nice and cash. I got that. Here's Sebastian Grico. And that one's by him at 94. Grico singled and scored in the first. And then struck out in the third. Jamison got him. Then bounces another slider. Well, Fisher's done a nice job since coming in. Gators have wrestled the lead back from AM and putting up zeros. That went at the top of the strike zone. Call the strike. It's a big difference when the Gators lead through the middle part of the game as to when they don't. One two pitch is high. When leading after the six, Florida's 12 and one. When they trail, they're just three and ten. Now the two two, and that's fouled straight back. Kevin O'Sullivan continues to dominate college baseball. What he has done to this program as that one is fouled back again. No college program has more College World Series trips. Super Super Regionals hosted. He's done that nine times. Been a top eight national seed ten times. And he's been in the NCAA tournament all 15 times he's been eligible so far. And a career winning percentage close to 680 if it's not on that exact number which coaching in this conference having a winning percentage that high and his dominance of it in state schools has been amazing as well good pitch right there by Jamison and he'll strike out Grico but the second time you really start seeing the, the metamorphosis of Fisher Jamison this is the best he's looked since he's been on campus the last couple of outings and he really has been able to find it and that pitch right there in particular that slider with that sharp movement down is well, his swing and miss pitch yeah, and, and he he does bury those every now and then but with the arm angle it, it looks yep. like the fastball but it's just coming down the entire time yeah that funk in the delivery is another thing you have to contend with as a hitter got to contend with Adam Hader Moda he's been great tonight but he's down in the count now 2 after Giving somebody a souvenir out there on the berm. Hater Moto, a three run homer on a hanging slider from Slater in the first. And then he singled and scored his next time up. Average up to 315 now. Jamison slider fouled off again. Yeah, I think, and to finish up on what Sully's been able to do here, the possible 15. Regional host opportunities, and the Gators have hosted 12 times. It's just a consistency like no other. And his ability to put teams together year after year is the reason why there's packed stadiums in Gainesville now. Yeah, over 7,000. Each Friday and Saturday over the weekend, a little less than that on Easter Sunday. Now the 2 2. And that one right in front of the plate. Heyman's got it. And a dart over to Caglione to retire the side. Kate Curlin's first at bat went well. Three run homer. But he struck out on the third. Hits this one hard, right back where it came from, and that'll find center field as Niles couldn't get it and it's the second knock of the night for the Gators second baseman. And right now the Gator hitters are starting to make the adjustment knowing that they're not seeing 95 miles an hour. This pitch was 83 on it was his fastball so you're going to have to make that adjustment as a hitter and lock yourself in that it's just not coming on you as quick so you got to stay back. 
Here's the Gator catcher tonight, Luke Heyman. He's been on base both times. And a right on right changeup. Is a swing and a miss. Heyman singled in the first, got hit by a pitch in the third, and scored in front of Donay's three run homer. There were two outs that inning, and then two hit batters. Similar to what happened in the first inning for the Gators. Shelton and Evans quickly got out, and then Cags and Shelnut were hit and walked, and then Curlin's three run homer. So it's been the inability to get that third out tonight for Florida A&M. That one got a piece of the catcher again. Popples had a rough night back there tonight. You're in a situation now. Do you run curling over there at first? I mean, he's still nursing that hand, so it's almost like do you want to put a head first slide into this as you can see this ball coming mm. right off the helmet, right off the mask for the second time. Fake like he was going to go, put on the brakes. Do you know what the first ever masks were made out of? Wow. I don't I don't know the answer. I was just you being a great baseball historian might because you just wonder on balls like that what it would have done to catchers faces. Here's a slow roller short. Niles has it for one on to first not going to be in time. So Curlin and Heyman will trade spots. I know they didn't use helmets till well into the 60s. Yeah, isn't that crazy? They had this little plastic thing that they would put underneath your hat. I don't know how much that helped. Here's Armando Albert. How about this? When I played here in Florida, we wore helmets in the field. But that, but everyone did in the SEC. Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't wear ear flaps because they didn't have them then. Yeah. So we were fearless. No ear flaps. <laughs> yeah, there's but, always those those great clips of Pete Rose running around the bases with the thing flapping around. Yeah, yeah. That's right. But think about this: infielders and outfielders are wearing helmets in the field. Infielders and outfielders. Yeah. In an SEC game. Yeah, it's a little crazy. We got our uh, crack statistician Steve Egan here, right at, right on it. Early on catcher's mass, this was back in 1877. Those guys were basically wearing converted fencer's mass. As Albert tries to lay down a bunt, that one will be foul. And then a year later, started to appear in Spalding Sporting Goods catalog and Catchers started wearing masks. But yeah, pretty crazy. So fencer's masks are really skinny masks with a bunch of bars on it. Now the 2-2 pitch. Albert takes that one down low. That's back in the era of Bill Calhoun of the Boston uh, Braves, 1913 in that area. He was the first big leaguer to come out of uh, Rock Mart, Georgia. Okay. There you go. Albert hits that one hard, but a great play by Fontenot. Go to short for one, and then that's a great 4 6 3 twin killing. Fontenot to Niles over to Greco. And the Gators do not score here in the fifth. So the fifth, so we'll head to the sixth with Fisher Jamison back to work. He'll face six, seven, and eight in Jamie Shoup's order. And the first pitch is a little bit low for ball one. Jamison has not thrown a lot of balls tonight. 31 strikes in 42 pitches. Including one right there. And the fact that he's in there for his third inning of relief tells me a lot. Tell me that Kevin O'Sullivan is really starting to trust what he's been doing recently in that relief role. He's retired eight in a row. As that one sends Guy to straightaway center field, and it's going to get out of the yard. So for the first time this year, Joseph Perini goes big fly, and that's good 400 feet straightaway center field. You know, as crazy as this sounds, in a in a game that you got the lead in, Kevin O'Sullivan can live with that more than he can with a base on balls to start the inning. 
I mean, he's going to make the move now, but fastball ball down the middle. It, it was so funny, though, you know, with pitching. When you tell guys you got to throw strikes. But when you throw a strike, if it's not in the perfect location, that's what could happen to it. Yeah, it got to be a, a quality strike. So Jamison had retired eight in a row before he heads back to the dugout and gives up the home run. Blake Purnell coming in for the Gators. We'll tell you about him when we come back here on the SEC Network. Is to face the bottom three hitters now in the Florida A&M order. Jalen Niles, the shortstop. Good pitch right there. And, and 87 is probably a good speed for Purnell. I think where he started yes. to get in trouble last year is yes. when he was humping up, ball wasn't running and moving as much. And that one, you see some weak contact out there to Caglione. He'll flip to Purnell covering. And that's out number one. Yeah, the slower he is, the better he is because he gets more movement going down and he can roll over the top of him. That went 79 miles an hour. Well, and that was evident by what the Gators saw over the weekend from Mississippi State. They had a side armor yep. getting it up there in the mid 60s. Yeah, and, and, and he was a kid from uh, right down the road in uh, Ocala, Central Florida State College, Marty Smith School, won the Juco World Series last year. Ben Kim goes back up the middle. Curlin will able to backhand it. Throw is not going to be in time, though. Kim with some speed is going to have an infield single. It's his second hit in three at bats. And Curlin, who made a great play over the weekend of the same kind, not able to get enough oomph on that one. So Purnell's gotten a couple of ground balls to the right side. And now, True Fontano. He'll take strike one. Fontenot a sack bun his first time. Flew to right his last time. Average still above 300. He's hit in four of his last five as that one just misses. Purnell hasn't really thrown a lot in his appearances, just nine innings total over the 12 appearances, but he's been effective and he's getting out the guys he's been asked to get out. One, two is a chopper right back to him. He'll go to Curlin for one and on to first, not in time. Fontenot about, able to get the foot on the bag. That's about as good as you can do on a slow hopper like that. A lot of pitchers would have just gone to first base. This is a nice athletic play by Purnell because you got to negotiate that mound. You're throwing with your body going uphill on the mound. And a lot of times you'll see pitchers throw that wild. It'll be a high throw because of where their body position is. That was nice. Has been sent back to the dugout. The next two via the strikeout. So he's trying to avoid the hat trick. Fontenot's got three steals. It's tied for the team lead. And another big hack by Jackson. It was all Swack's second team. Brunel humped up on that one. Fontenot three for four in the stolen base department. And really not a bad time to go. You got your leadoff guy on. If they throw him out, you get your leadoff guy leading off next inning. Not a big lead, though. The lead is to the point where you're almost risking it throwing over to first base. Because it's not a big one. That's a lead that's saying, eh, I'm not feeling confident. 
And Pernell now with two strikes on the hitter. We'll see what they choose to do. I mean, I don't know if he lengthens his lead. Your lead should be the same no matter what. But it's short right now. It's just a touch longer now. Let me tell you about the lead that I see right here tells me that leave him alone because it's not going to be a good jump. Go get the hitter. You got a tough hitter with two strikes. Don't worry about the base runner. You got two outs, two strikes. Get the hitter. If he goes, he goes. So what? Heyman set up way off the plate. He'll throw back. Man, it's almost like they gave that strike up right there, worrying about the runner at yeah. first. You know, he got he popped up too quick on that one and maybe stole a, a possible strike to recall. Go get the hitter. This this is their best hitter in their lineup. That one got a piece of Heyman. And John Bennett in his pleated pants will walk out and give a new baseball. Umpire's courtesy when he sees his counterpart behind the plate get get hit. Yeah, those guys at least show the courtesy to each other. There's well, a lot of times where they're not nice to each other. They were late. <laughs> 2 2 pitch, got him. So Jackson has got the hat trick. And Purnell. He's got some time over the weekend. And he'll take a breaking ball for strike one. Just four for 21 on the year he is a freshman from Tampa. Yost in SEC play this year is two for seven. So two of his four hits have come against the league as he takes a breaking ball for strike two. Yeah, he's a kid. At, he's he goes in after everything hard. It's the way he plays the game out of Sickles High School in Citrus Park, Florida, in the Tampa area. Not far from me. That went off the end of the bat. It'll be a, a tough play for Niles, but he'll make it. Bang bang play over at first, but they just get Yost for out number two. Boy, their infield is showing me something here lately. Making some good plays. Yeah, middle infielders especially. Niles and Fontenot have been really good tonight. And you see the right call there by Damian Beal. So two quick outs and Colby Shelton. We'll hit for the fourth time tonight. This one a dribbler right back to the mound. An easy play for Wagner and a really easy inning for those in the game to play center. Brody Popple will hit and take strike one. A good fastball at the knees. Popple's a two hole hitter and he's had a good night. Couple of singles and a couple of ribbies. And that went in there for strike two. Kate Fisher starting to toss now out in the Gator bullpen. That one just misses. D1 baseball came out with their top 25 again on Monday. Five of the first seven teams in the country are from the Southeastern Conference. One two is high. Gators, of course, included with that at six. There you see Phil Pott and Cade Fisher getting loose. Arkansas, the number one team in the country. Their earned run average is ridiculous at about two and a half. Here's the two two pitch, and it's fouled off. Clemson's playing really well. They're the second ranked team in the country. And then AM is third, Tennessee fourth. Gators, yeah. of course, one, two out of three against Texas AM. Yeah, Coach Backich came over from Michigan now at Clemson. Really turning them around. 
Yeah, in a hurry, too. 2-2 two -two pitch right back where it came from, and that sneaks into center field for Popple's third hit of the night. And, and the fact that Cade Fisher's out there with Phil Potts telling me that Kevin O'Sullivan's not messing around, he wants to win this game bad. And he's going with a guy like Cade Fisher, who he's going to use a lot on an SEC weekend. But he's going to get him some work in a, in a midweek game because, again, we talked about it, that Gators haven't won a midweek game since, what, the... February 28th. February 28th, which... I think it was National Chocolate Souffle Day. Oh. My memory serves me. Jacoby Stanley hits. Steve Egan might have to look that one up just to confirm it. Well, Nas it National yeah. Chocolate Souffle Day, I think, was on that day. Okay. And it wasn't the last day of the month this no. year. This was a leap year. Yeah. Good bunt. Purnell will go over and get it. Bare hand only play as the first. And it will be successful. So how about what the Rattlers are doing? They're bunning, sacrificing with a three-hole hitter. They they smell it right here. They're going to play a little station to station, see if they can get a hit, tie this thing up. Jamie Ship's feeling a little two, 2014 vibe going here. Yep. And you are exactly right. It was National Chocolate Souffle Day on February. Hater Mota. Three hits between them, but they have also struck out three times. But you see Florida a and m and, and, and you say, okay, they're, they're doing well in their conference. I mean, this is a team that's probably going to make it to a regional again. They play a tough non-conference schedule for that reason, because they know their only shot to make it is to win their conference. Sure. Good fastball there from Fisher. Painted perfectly on the outer part of the plate. Tying runs at second base. Just one out here in the seventh. And back-to-back -back fastballs in there to get ahead of Grico. Now let's see if he throws in that sweep and breaking ball. He did, but nowhere close. Rattlers have scored in four of the six innings tonight. Another fastball, and that one is foul. Yeah, the hardest of the night at 92. And has him set up again for that breaking ball, but he needs to start that breaking ball more inner third and let that sweep away because he gets a lot of vertical I'm sorry horizontal break on his breaking ball trying to go fastball in and Grico's battling here a couple of good swings with two strikes well, yeah he, you would think if Fisher threw that almost at his body yeah, as much as that's yeah, breaking he, well he's got him set up for that pitch now after the two fastballs so you throw it right say inner third and, and he, like I said he gets about what 24 inches of horizontal. They wanted to go fastball in again, and Fisher completely missed his spot. First base is open, but guy that's had a great night, and the veteran, Hater Moto, is on deck. 3-2 pitch. Got him. Good fastball there. After a really good at bat, Grico just couldn't get the bat off of his shoulder for that fastball. Well, Sully called for the fastball because the breaking ball was not landing in the zone, so you really didn't have a choice but to go ahead and challenge him with the fastball and totally froze him. That pitch came from that windup almost behind him. So here's Hater Moda, and a changeup is in there for strike one. Three-run homer his first time, and then a single after that. Yeah, veteran guys we talked about. Fouls that one off down the right field line. So Fisher way ahead now. We'll see what the Gators choose to do. Hater Moda now has 19 hits over his last 13 games. And he has driven in 10 in that span. So this is the guy that Jamie Shoup wants up there right now. And he had a home run last week. I mean, I'm sorry, last year. Mm-hmm. 
in a midweek game here and did it again tonight. So a big pitch coming from Fisher. It's a one two and it's fisted foul. It's like they want to go in and they go up instead and Fisher gets the strikeout. So good job by the lefty comes out of the bullpen tonight. Gators will send up two three and four. The heart of their order here to try to. Increase that one run lead. Evans tonight. 0 for three. As he fouls one back. They just sang out take me out to the ball game and. Yesterday opening day at Wrigley. Andre Dawson. And Billy Williams, Andre Dawson saying, take me out to the ball game. The Hall of Famer played his college ball for the Florida A&M Rattlers. That he did. The Hawk. I played against the Hawk in high school. Wow. He played at Southwest High, and I think he was like the seven-hole hitter. Yeah. I and mean, he was, he, he, he was an special. afterthought. No, no. Then he went to Florida A&M, and the rest is history. He figured it out. He was a walk-on at Florida A&M. That one nowhere near. Yeah, we don't get nicknames like that anymore. The Hawk, yeah. Vince Coleman played for Florida A&M. Yeah. Marquise Griffin. Grissom. Played, Grissom, yep. I'm sorry, played for Florida A&M. Yep. An old expo. Oh, yeah. Those are always fun trivia questions. One, two is a little low. I was in the expo's organization, played with Andres Galarraga, Tony Phillips. Evans trying to get on base with Caglione lurking on deck. And he'll take that one down low for ball three. A couple of good takes on off speed pitches from Evans. There you see Caglione next. Three two pitch breaking ball got him. Good pitch on the outer part of the plate, and Evans just couldn't pull the trigger. Now he's done a great job since coming on and keeping the Gators at bay. So Wagner keeping this game tight. So here's Caglione with one out. He'll lay off the first pitch. Well, AM over the weekend with one out. Ended up walking him intentionally to put him on base. So that happened earlier in the series, and they, of course, didn't make the walk, or excuse me, Mississippi State last weekend. They, they did not uh, walk him to allow for the heroics, and there's some more of them. A no doubter deep over the right field wall, and another Jack for Jack. He's got the same number that's on his back 14 of them, and the Gators have a two run lead. People are going to see this. They're going to end up walking him the rest of his career. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a 76 mile an hour slider. Actually, it's a changeup that he leaves up there. And he just keeps his hands back and keeps it in the yard. And that's not easy to do on a changeup because a lot of times what you'll do is you'll pull those foul. So just the fact that he waited on that, that's very impressive. But I want to go back to, to, to a question I think you're asking about putting him on the other day against Mississippi State. Ty Evans leads off the ninth. He's the potential tie run. Cags is potential winning run. And he's at the plate. And, and of course, everybody after the game said, hindsight, oh, you should have walked him. You should have walked him with nobody out. Mm. Well, Shellnut's tired of getting hit. He's going to throw down his bat and yell. That's the third straight at bat that Shellnut's been hit tonight. Kevin O'Sullivan touching some of it. Curlin takes a breaking ball for a strike. Well, no Gator has been hit by a pitch three times in a game this year, so Shelnut's the first to have that happen. 
Curlin fouls that one off. He's got two hits tonight. And it's now six hit by pitches tonight against Florida A&M. That's the most that the Gators have had against them this year. 0-2 breaking ball. We'll do it again. Curlin slowly starting to get that average up. He's back above 300 now at 302. And really what I think a lot of people don't realize, just playing with the, the hand injury for the last month or so has really hindered him. Shelnut trying to go there on a ball down in the dirt, and he's going to get caught up in a rundown and just get tagged out on the way by. So a bad read there by Tyler Shelnut. It's the second out of the inning. Yeah, he's going to see it, and just the fact that he stopped, you know, he, it's almost to the point where once you're in that scenario at this level of baseball, which you, I told guys to do is look for the interference play. Mm -hmm. no, no, we did not. And what I mean by that is once you're in a rundown and you're drawing throws, look for the guy that just gave up the ball, stop and try to run into him and make contact, because at this level, you get a rundown, chances are you're going to be out. Yeah, I haven't seen someone get out of a rundown in a long time. Yeah, I, it did, you would, I would just look for the guy and try to brush against him that just gave the ball up and try to make some kind of contact. 2-2 two -two pitch, got him for a little tardy on that breaking ball. He was trying to go the other way with it. Late February, it's been over a month, but still ranked six in the country because they keep taking two out of three on the weekends from the toughest conference in the country. Kate Fisher has been really tough. He's faced two guys and struck them both out. Joseph Perini the hitter now. He homered his last time up. That knocked Fisher Jamison out of the game. It was Perini's first hit of the year. That was as a lefty. So he hits as a righty here. The Gators with four more homers tonight. They've got 60 on the year as that one's fouled back. Still well behind school record 146 they hit a year ago. Now the one two pitch fouled off again. Yeah, Prini came in hitting 207, but he's a guy through the years has been a good hitter for Florida and a there's a lot of older guys on this ball club. Fisher got him. Good little two seamer on the inner part of the plate. And Perini was frozen. So Fisher is phase three and struck all three out. Yeah, right down the middle. Now Jalen Miles. Miles yet to be spaced tonight, but he did drive in a run with a ground out. And Miles has shown us some tools at that shortstop position tonight. Yeah, their middle infielders have been really good. Gonna get on base there. He turned around a 91 mile an hour fastball. Good swing for the senior. And that is now 12 hits on the night for Florida A&M. Second time he's been on base tonight. Also had an RBI ground out. Tying run at the plate. Pinch hitter coming up for Florida A&M. It's Jordan Brown, sophomore right-hander. He'll hit for Ben Kim. Brown is not homered this year. He'll foul that one back. Yeah, Jamie Sheep said this guy, Brown, is as good an athlete as we have on the ball club. From Margate down there in South Florida. Mm -hmm. There's a chopper to short. Shelton to Curlin. 
And not enough times getting it over to Cags. But it is the second out of the inning. And now the nine hole hitter in Trey Fontenot. Fontenot 0 for 2. Squaring to bunt. Yeah, true Fontenot with his walk up song for me would be the song True by the group Spando Ballet of the 80s. Okay. They were a big, they had a big video. That one's lined right off the glove of Cags, and it's going to be fair. We'll see how quickly Niles can get around the base pass. Evans to Curlin. They're going to hold him up. And a good relay in by the Gators. But the nine hole hitter doubles down the right field line, and now a base hit can tie this thing up. It's true on that swing. Mm hmm. In the in the ball, if you if you're saying hey the ball landed foul, but it hit Gainesville. Jackson a 314 hitter. Fisher will go to the windup and misses with a backdoor breaking ball. Jackson came into the day with the best batting average on the team. And he lays off another one. And again, you got a base open, so. Looks like they're not going to challenge here. Mm. They do there, and he's thwarted. <laughs> you talk about a hitter looking for another breaking ball. Yep. That was it. That fastball's up. Gator defense in the infield told to knock anything down with the potential tie run at second base. But now the 3 1 fastball is right through there. Runner at second, though, will get a head start. Be biggest, tough to throw him out. Biggest pitch of this ball game. Here it comes, and there it goes. A jam job over towards the Gator dugout. Caglione trying to get there, and he does right up against the railing. And the big fellow makes another big time play. And Brody Donay, the three scheduled hitters, against the righty Grant Harrison. Uh, Heyman will foul one over our heads. Several years now at the Condren Ballpark, and no radio or TV announcer has gotten a ball in their booth. 01 is high. The netting goes up just a little bit too much. So you've got to get a really weird angle to get a souvenir up here in the radio booth or TV booth. 1-1 one, one pitch is a little high again. Sounds like you're frustrated on that one because I know you used to like to catch those. Yeah, about four or five over the years at the old ballpark, McKeithen Stadium. 2-1 pitch. There was a, a big dent on the door, too, where a game that I must have not been doing made its way in and made its way to the back. Somebody was scared to go get it. Because that never would have happened. Right? No. Okay, I got you. Heyman takes a strike there. And he thought it was ball four. He'll try to get on base. Now, did you bring a net or did you have just bare hand? I wasn't like that guy at the old member Miami Stadium. Yeah, of course. Sat there by the, the net and got a million balls. 3 2 pitch, got him. Good pitch on the inner part of the plate. And a couple of nice fastballs sends Heyman back to the dugout. Really good pitch. Yeah, right on I'll tell you a guy would bring a net. Frankie Avalon. He would bring a net to the beach. He did his beach party movies. <laughs> Here's Albert. He takes one high. 
He's trying to get his first hit of the night. He's 0 for his last 10 now. He has flown out and grounded into a double play. Also been hit and scored. That's not going to be enough. A little lazy fly to left where Stanley will lose his hat again, but still make the catch. Well, I tell you this, you can never have too many runs going into the ninth. Tell you what, Florida AM came in here and they have battled right from the first inning on. Yeah, they've led on a few different occasions. Brody Donay's had a good night at the plate. He'll take a breaking ball for a strike. Walked on a 3 2 pitch his first at bat. Then a three run homer on a hanging breaking ball. Took a first pitch fastball his last time up and line one right to the left fielder. He's hit the ball hard all night. Got a fastball there. In Cags, you combine both of them, be the most raw power of any duo in the country. One two pitch is a souvenir down the right field line. And I think that was the plan going in that it might be somewhere like that close in the batting or I think the first game it was like that, yep. right? The first couple of weekends. And then he scuffled, you know, put the ball in play, but you know, it's another part of the year. Things change. Maybe he's made some changes, and tonight he's showing that he he needs more playing time. That's what he's saying to Sully. He's in a one-two hole here. And that breaking ball hit foul. A hanger. Let's talk about his night. He's one for two. He walked the other time, but hit the home run and a line out. Hit that ball right on the screws to left field for a line out. So he's given notice. So I would love to see him put in, in play here. He's had some good at bats. And, and a, a guy that doesn't need to try to hit a home run, he's so big and strong, just good contact, it'll carry itself out of this ballpark, especially the wind blowing out the left center. And he'll see another 3-2 pitch. Boy, if I'm Donate here, I am just sitting fastball. If he gets you to swing at a breaking ball, tip your cap to him, but sit fastball, keep your hands back, and then just go ahead and give it a good swing. He got the fastball, and it's hit pretty well to right again. Kim going back to the track. It's gone. An oppo bomb for Brody. And he is certainly telling Kevin O'Sullivan that he does want some more ABs. You think he's happy this is a midweek game he's playing in? Yeah, good week game. Important, right? Okay. Didn't try to do too much of this. Just let his ability of getting down and hitting the ball hard and having that big, strong power that he possesses take it right out of the yard. Oppo. Great at bat sitting on that fastball. Here's Hayden Yost. Second at bat for him. He chopped one out to the shortstop. His first time up there. So the first multi homer game of Donay's Gator career. Hey, I'll tell you what, too. 
Donne has experience hitting in cold weather playing at Virginia Tech. So yeah, very true. <laughs> Some of these guys on his Gator team. They, they yeah, we'll know what hit him on in Friday. the 40s. Yeah. Gators have certainly used a long ball. The last two homer game was with Shelton against LSU a couple of weekends ago. Those were in back to back at bats. Go staying alive. This would be a nice confidence builder here for Yost to get a base hit going into the weekend. Because Sully, you know, he, he picks his spots for you. So it'd be good to see him get something here. But he'll swing and miss at a high fastball. So a couple of strikeouts in the inning. And that is a big confidence boost tonight for that big man. Kate Fisher has worked an inning and two thirds with three strikeouts. It's allowed a couple of hits, but no runs. It been very efficiently 34 pitches. He's facing two, three, and four in the order. Brody Popple has three singles tonight but as a lefty so the switch hitter will foul that one back and even up the count of two and two two three and four in the order so it's who Jamie Shoup wants up there Fisher ready and the 2 2 got him on the inner part of the plate. That fastball has been really good tonight. And that's his fourth strikeout. And how about that? The hardest one he's thrown all night at 95 on the inner third. This is Powder River. Jacoby Stanley, the three hole hitter, is hitless tonight. That one crossed up Heyman. Without a doubt, right there. They call him YC, Jacoby Stanley. And, and Jimmy Shub says we call him YC because, like, the first month he was here, all he would say is, Yes, coach. <laughs> yes, coach. And Jamie, because we've got to have more of a conversation, son, than yes, coach. I guess it's still better than NC. We might not be on the team anymore That's if he right. kept saying that. That one's hit to center. The new center fielder, Michael Robertson, will drift over. And an easy play throughout number two. That ball is hit on the screws. Nice job by Stanley, but right at the center fielder, Robertson. Dale Thomas also in the game playing third base defensively for the Gators. Sebastian Grieco, now the last hope. He is trying to avoid the sombrero. And he'll take strike one. Singled his first time and then struck out the next three. Fisher working quickly and just pumping strikes. Yeah, he's hovering about mid 90s now, so he's got the adrenaline going. And I love the low pitch count for him tonight. He'll try to finish off the lefty, but miss wide. Yeah, might as well go ahead and challenge. You got the three run lead, two out, nobody on. Let your defense work if you have to. Ward just have him swing and miss. Doesn't have to swing, and the pitch did not miss. Gators win a midweek game for the first time since late February, and that is their 17th win of the year. Florida with the victory tonight, 10-7.